Hey friends, welcome back. Today I have a really fun video. We're gonna be doing some more church cookbook recipes. It's been a while since we've done one of these videos, so I've been ready to get back in here and try out some more of these Southern cookbook recipes. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing a dinner recipe, an easy side dish recipe made with biscuit dough. And then also at the end, I actually found a recipe with a date on the back of 1967. And this is gonna be our dessert recipe for today. So stay tuned, we have dinner, a side dish, and a vintage dessert. So I'm just gonna start by browning up one pound of ground beef along with one chopped onion and some garlic. All right, so y'all can see the ground beef. I got it browned up really nicely along with those peppers. I mean, Lord y'all, not peppers, onions and garlic in here. Already smelling good. So one of the things I'm changing in this recipe, the recipe calls for a can of tomatoes, a 16 ounce can, but I'm actually gonna use tomato sauce just because I know that I want my lasagna to be kind of more smooth and less chunky. I'm not gonna use quite that whole can. I'm gonna put it over here in case I need more. But then also the recipe also calls for two cans of tomato paste as well. So we're gonna get that added in. The recipe also calls for garlic powder instead of the fresh garlic or the jarred minced garlic that we used earlier. So I'm just gonna put a little sprinkle extra in. Next, the recipe calls for half a teaspoon of oregano leaves. And then the recipe calls for one tablespoon of chopped parsley. One thing I do not like to do is chop herbs, especially when I'm trying to film a recipe and all that. I love buying these little like lightly dried herbs. They keep well in the refrigerator for at least a month. So I'm just gonna add in about a tablespoon of this lightly dried parsley. Then you wanna add just a little bit more oregano too. And of course with any recipe, you know, season everything how you want it, how your family will like. And do a little pinch of salt. Then a good sized pinch of black pepper. And then since we have all those plain old tomatoes and they're acidic, we're gonna add about a tablespoon of sugar. I'm gonna stir this up, get it simmering, and we'll taste it and we'll adjust our seasonings here in just a little bit. The recipe also calls to add two cups of water, but I'm gonna modify that as well. I just feel like any time a recipe, especially for something like this, calls for plain old water, all that is is an opportunity to add a little bit more flavor. So instead of water, I have two cups of beef broth over here, and I just buy the better than bouillon little paste. I found some on sale a while back, so I stocked up, especially on the beef and the chicken. And I just keep these in my fridge. It's a whole lot easier than having to store all those cartons of chicken broth or beef broth. And the flavor really is deeper and more rich too. All right, I'm gonna turn my stove up a little bit, get this simmering. It already looks really good. Smells really good too. All right, y'all, I just taste tested our sauce. It is really, really good. I think I am gonna add just a tiny bit more sugar not much at all it's almost there i don't want this to be sweet obviously just a little bit we'll give this another stir and this sauce is pretty much done i might have to start just buying that tomato sauce and making my own you know pasta sauce i always keep tomato paste on hand because rayo he getting a little expensive y'all feel me tomato sauce and tomato paste seriously might start doing that Right, y'all, I have my nine by 13 pan out here. I just brought that sauce over. It looks and smells so good. I got my lasagna noodles cooked up and drained on the side. So now it's time to assemble this lasagna. Now this is another thing that this recipe does a little bit differently 
that I'm used to. So this part is pretty normal. We're gonna add about a cup of the sauce to the bottom of our pan. But normally I would mix my ricotta or cottage cheese with different shredded cheeses and usually an egg and maybe some seasonings. And then I would layer that whole thing in as one. But this recipe, you layer everything separately. So I thought, why not? Let's give it a try. Let's see if it makes a big difference. All right, I just have my lasagna noodles over here Ooh, in the sink and they are hot. So I'm just gonna start layering my lasagna like normal. I'm gonna try to fit three pieces in here so I might overlap just a tiny bit. Another layer of sauce. Spread it out nice and even. And also, by the way, this is great for making ahead if you're gonna be busier later in the evening around dinner time or whenever you're gonna eat this. That's what I'm doing today. I'm just gonna make it, let it cool a little bit, pop it in the fridge, and then bake it later. Probably have to bake it a little bit longer, but I love getting my cooking done in the day. That way at our busy nights, I'm ready to go. All right, so next we're gonna layer in some cottage cheese. And y'all, I'm not a big cottage cheese fan, but I don't mind it usually in lasagna. So it's gonna be interesting to see how I like it. You know, just kinda in a layer like this. And this recipe did not specify how much cottage cheese. It just said a carton. So I got a big one, but I'm thinking you might just need a little one. But also, if you really just don't like cottage cheese, you can use ricotta, which I really love. So next we're doing a layer of freshly shredded mozzarella cheese. It's gonna melt up really well. And I didn't shred my own Parmesan, but I do have some shredded Parmesan cheese here as well. So we're just gonna sprinkle some of that on. All right, so I'm basically just gonna do the exact same thing again. I know where the name favorite lasagna came from in this cookbook because it is probably my new favorite. This sauce was so delicious. Like I said, I'm seriously going to start using this recipe every time instead of making rayos. And y'all know how much we love our rayos. It just had such a really good homemade taste and was super easy to throw together. Also on the side there, you saw those garlic knots. This is the easiest side dish ever. Let me show you how to make it. All right, so for these garlic knots, you're actually gonna start with a can of the Grand's biscuits. And then next, we're just going to quarter the biscuits. I love cutting biscuits for some reason. I know that sounds so crazy. But I really do, it's so satisfying. Some people love to cut Velveeta or I don't know, things like that. But Velveeta is sticky. I don't know, this is just satisfying to me. So let's get all these biscuits quartered up. Get all your little doohickeys to the middle of your cutting board and take your doohickeys over to the stove top. So I'm just using an oven safe pan because we're gonna pop this into the oven. This is two tablespoons of butter. I know that looks like three, but I just didn't get one cut big enough. We're gonna melt down this butter. One garlic clove. So the recipe calls for one garlic clove. Like I said, we're using the jarred kind. Now don't even start. I like jarred garlic. If you don't, we don't care, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and add in our cut biscuits. Spread those around a little bit. And then lastly, we're just gonna add some Italian seasoning. It says a teaspoon, but I'm just gonna sprinkle some on. We're gonna saute our biscuits for just a couple minutes. And then I said an oven safe pan because this is going into the oven at 350 for just about 15 minutes. And I just put our lasagna out like I said, cause it's better, you know, to let your lasagna sit a few minutes before you try to cut into it. So that's a perfect time to get our garlic knots ready. Spread them out so they don't all cook together and make one, one huge biscuit or one huge garlic knot. Toss them around a little bit. All right, so I'm just gonna take these over to the oven and bake them 15 minutes. Y'all, I thought I was recording and I wasn't. So these already look so good. That pan is hot. Um, but I just melted one more tablespoon of butter and just put over the tops because I'm gonna sprinkle on just a little bit of garlic salt. 
because the butter I used was unsalted and you ever had a garlic knot, it does have a little bit of salt. So just a little bit of that. And then the recipe calls for freshly grated Parmesan cheese. We'll go with the green can. It's freshly out the can. Freshly from Walmart. Let's give a little sprinkle. These look so good. And they were good. 10 out of 10 recommend. We all love these. I will definitely be making these again. So the dessert we're gonna make is a handwritten recipe, my favorite. But on the back, I just thought this was so interesting. This came from October 10th, 1967. And it is a shopper's matinee guest ticket. And it says, a group of progressive merchants are offering for your enjoyment every Tuesday morning at 8.30 a.m. for 10 weeks, a series of quality entertainment morning, oh, a series of quality entertainment morning movie parties featuring Hollywood's finest movies, stage entertainment, and free refreshments. I just thought it was so interesting that this is a movie ticket from October 10th, 1967. How many years ago was that? A lot. We figured it out the other day, what do we say, 56, something? I don't know, y'all tell me in the comments, y'all figure it out. The year is 1967. 56 years. So, we're gonna make a 56 year old dessert. That's not really that old, if you ask me, but anyway, still kinda cool. So to make these chocolate scotcheroos, we're gonna start with a large pot. We're gonna add one cup of sugar and then one cup of the light Cairo syrup. We're just gonna add that in and bring this up to a bowl. I just used a wire whisk and just kinda continually whisk that sugar around to make sure that it melted really evenly in that syrup. And once it finally did start to bubble up a little bit, you add one cup of peanut butter. I just kinda eyeballed that. And then I had six cups of pre-measured Rice Krispies that I just poured in and then stirred everything together to get everything nice and combined. Next, we're gonna bring over a greased nine by 13 dish, and we're just gonna get this mixture all down in there and spread out. I just kinda like to spread mine out and kinda push mine down in the dish, so that way when you cut them, you know, the slices come out a little bit easier. I'm sure you've all made Rice Krispie treats before, so you know how to do that. But then next, we're gonna bring over a microwave safe bowl, and we're gonna add one package of milk chocolate chips, and then one cup of the butterscotch morsels. I just microwaved this in about 30 second increments until everything was all melted together, gave that a really good stir and then you just spread this chocolate butterscotch mixture all over top of your rice krispies and all you do from there is let it harden up and then you're able to slice it now let me just tell y'all these things are sweet honey okay if you need a sweet treat these are definitely sweet enough for you i think that these are delicious but if i make these again i think i will make the rice crispy treats just with some butter and marshmallows like i normally would and then maybe half the chocolate and butterscotch on top so i'm gonna type out this way as well as the way i'll try again next time down below All right, my friends, thank you so much for cooking along with me today. I hope that you will give some of these recipes a try. Let me know down below if you've ever heard of these scotcheroos. I hope you're all doing amazing, and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye, y'all. <laughs>